Our data privacy driving that decision in Seoul. But what happens in the arena of artificial intelligence goes far beyond or has repercussions beyond usual security concerns. I spoke with Joel Lang, he's executive VP and GM, risk and research at Dow Jones. I asked him if there was good reason for the enormous trepidation in reaction to developments from a Chinese AI startup, DeepSeek. Well, it's clear that for many in the marketplace, this was considered almost a Sputnik moment. Uh, not an insignificant amount of value was was lost in in, in a day on uh, Nvidia stock, for example, going down by six hundred billion dollars, uh, and it was a wake up call to the tech industry, particularly in the U.S., uh, that the advantage that was thought to be had is was is actually razor thin. And I think the U.S. AI industry is is certainly woken up from its hubris and thinking that it had a large lead. It's clear that there is uh, great competition. And as a result, the protectionist rhetoric as well as uh, actions taken by uh, the U.S. government, who'd seen Josh Hawley introduce the decoupling America's Artificial Intelligence Capabilities from China Act, um, a bipartisan effort uh, that's being pursued. Uh, and and that, that rhetoric will only increase. The other criticism following the launch of R1, uh, DeepSeek's uh, large language model, was the suggestion that what you have uh, pointed to, a uh, protectionist rhetoric and action, as an example, curb, curbs on the export of high uh, frontier chips from at least late 2022, those export curbs failed to do what they were supposed to do, which was to curb Chinese advances in artificial intelligence. Indeed. And I think it's a case of, of potentially too little too late. Uh, obviously, the Biden administration was very much aware uh, of this competitive race in relation to AI. Uh, obviously, we had the CHIPS Act and a lot of stimulus uh, in terms of production of technology in the U.S. But in terms of limiting development, that potentially has, has come too late. But you can control materials and components. Those are physical hardware objects. But what DeepSeek showed was that what you cannot control are data, modeling, motivation, and talent. Regulation alone, that is not going to be curbing any competition on that front, certainly from countries like China. True, I'd, I'd agree. And, and uh, I think the often when you restrict uh, those materials, the, it, it can increase innovation, obviously increases the conviction uh, of, um, uh, in this case, the U.S.'s adversary in China. Uh, and I think that's, uh, you know, in terms of the technological prowess of uh, China, China and Chinese industry, that's uh, uh, something that is irrefutable. Uh, obviously, you've had uh, major technological innovation with TikTok and Shine and uh, DeepSeek and, uh, and all the major technical innovations there. And so China is a formidable competitor uh, to the U.S. In, in relation to that talent and innovation, um, and, and that is difficult to restrict. Um, and th therefore, I think there's a two-part strategy in that regard. Is one is to limit those infrastructural capabilities as well as know-how from leaving the U.S., as well as uh, aligning partners to ensure that that does not leak to the other side. The other is to continue to promote innovation in the U.S. And again, harking back to Vice President Vance's comments in, in Europe last week, is encouraging the, those that are within the allied framework of the U.S. Uh, to encourage innovation and to uh, uh, decrease regulation where possible to, to continue that competition going forward. Today, we've got South Korea coming out to say banning downloads over concerns of how data is handled, stored, processed. But the risk goes much further than that. Uh, if deep seek models, which are relatively open source, which are cheap, which were cheap to develop, cheap to run, cheap to incorporate into your systems, if China becomes the primary supplier of downloadable, publicly available large language models. Everyone starts to use it. It may not be as good as something a good American company might launch, but it is good enough and it is cheap enough. This becomes the standard and the standards used in DeepSeek will then become more prevalent 
in the global landscape? Is that a larger security risk that American leaders have taken into account? Absolutely. Um, I, I think there's actually two, two parts to that. And, and, and one is, the first I would say is maybe less taking a, a few steps back in terms of the wider uh, acceptance of AI models and of generative AI uh, in terms of automation and obviously a huge amount of excitement, animal spirits in relation to the uh, possibilities and economic advantages of automation of AI. Uh, fundamental to that is the content that is input. You do not want to be using information which is not credible within your AI models. It's important to ensure that whatever AI or LLM you're using, that it's based on uh, information that comes from licensed published information to ensure that you're getting credible news and information. Now, coming back to your question in relation to the security risks that are associated with that, as Eric Schmidt says, we're potentially moving into an era of a bifurcated internet. And where that really becomes poignant is in terms of the potential for these types of models to be used uh, for intelligence gathering. The second, that they could potentially be used for uh, misinformation and getting across uh, the points of view of uh, the Chinese Communist Party or, or potentially uh, uh, other bad actors in the space. Um, and, and also when that comes to critical crisis points for society uh, in the Western world, uh, where you have these technologies that are then pervasive uh, within the home, uh, within uh, social media, that is a massive national security concern. Given the security risks, uh, and I quote uh, the U.S. Vice President, which you have mentioned, at that summit last week saying the U.S. of A is the lead in AI and our administration plans to keep it that way very quickly, what would winning or what would leadership in the AI race mean? Well, it's continuing that push for uh, automation and productivity gains. And so I think it's very clear, again, we the, the animal spirits that have come out of the uh, the election uh, and the uh, the push uh, for economic growth. There's a great opportunity for massive productivity gains uh, and also uh, improvements to lifestyle. Uh, I think the U.S. wants to be at the forefront of that, along with its allies, um, and ensure that innovation is protected, but also national security.